All right, good morning. So, how many people went to the keynote? Interesting, right? Change, bravery. I was waiting for Mel Gibson to write in, or blue face paint to be available for everybody. Uh, we're going to start off this morning, one of the first sessions here, talking about NSX certification being the next step in your career. My name is Chris McCain. I work for VMware. I'm the director of technical certification, specifically for the networking and security business unit. So I came to VMware in January with the sole purpose of helping develop the career path, or what started as the expert level certification, and what we quickly recognized needed to be more than just a certification track. So here's a disclaimer. You're going to see this throughout the week. Uh, there's nothing in my presentation that you can't share with anybody you want to, and hopefully you actually do share it with anybody and everybody. So when I, when I started at VMware back in January, I had come from being an external trainer and consultant, uh, and I'd had my VCDX already in, in data center virtualization. And I began the whole process of doing this by interviewing folks within the NSBU, as well as folks that were outside the NSBU, to get an idea of what people were looking for when they thought about an expert in network virtualization. And I have a bunch of interviews, and I have some quotes from some of the people that I interviewed uh, and some that I didn't interview. In this case, uh, we don't just need a certification and training. We need to build a career path. We need admins, engineers, HR managers, and executives to understand the cultural shift required to embrace the next generation data center. It became pretty obvious quickly that the disruption that people kept talking about around NSX wasn't just about what happens within the racks or what happens in the switches and the routers. It was something that was impacting the organization, something that HR managers needed to understand when they were looking for talent to come in and actually help drive network virtualization, or something that executives needed to understand because they wanted to see how it would rapidly change the way that their business was moving. I mean, you know, you saw the CEO and the president and all these people talk about network virtualization being one of the key pieces moving forward for VMware. So it wasn't, it wasn't just about building a certification. It was about collectively getting people together from different areas and figuring out how exactly this technology impacted them and then how we could build training and certification to make sure that people got educated properly so that they could go through the different stages from a professional level up through an expert level. When technologies like this come around, people will fear the disruptive nature. The only way to fight those fears is through education or a superhero. I didn't really interview Batman, but I imagine that's what he would have said. There's, they talk about change this morning, right? Change is natural, but the fear of change is also natural. When something new comes along and somebody says, ah, I'm hesitant, right? I don't know that I really want to go that route because you're comfortable in what you've been doing. There's this psychological aspect to looking at something new from a technology perspective because you fear that you may not know it well enough to do it. And the only way to overcome that fear is by educating yourself and bu building fluency that allows you to move forward with that technology. All right, if you look historically in the data center, even with vSphere, right? We, we saw years ago when ESX started to pick up momentum that the, the data center underwent a very large shift from physical to virtual. But there was still this demarcation point that existed between the virtual infrastructure and the physical. And the networking guys were asked to continue to do things like manage the switches, configure VLANs, in many cases, lots of VLANs, routing, handle spanning tree issues, load balancing, firewalls, IDS, IPS, VPN. There's still a lot of stuff there that happens in the physical world. But as we look towards network virtualization and we see the things that NSX can provide for us, we're taking a lot of those services that existed in the physical and we're bringing them into the virtual. Logical switching, logical routing, logical firewalls, load balancing, 
VPNs, third-party service insertion for malware protection, antivirus, all of that being brought into the virtualization layer. Well, you know, the reality of this is it's a physical networking person's dream to have a very static and stable underlying physical infrastructure. How many of you are physical network administrators? Don't you like it when things are stable and static? Or do you like it when every customer and every department and every project wants their own subnet? Right? You really want things to be static, and that's what we're giving you. But the problem now is, who's going to do these things? Is it the physical network administrator that's now going to begin doing this in the virtual space? Or is it the traditional vSphere administrator who's now going to take this on? That's one of the things that we had to figure out as we were building these certifications and building the training that we put together. And so to do this, back in May, we brought together about 40 or 50 individuals from external as well as internal. We brought in CCIEs, CCNPs, Cisco instructors, VCDXs, VCPs, VMware instructors. We brought in customers. We brought in partners. We brought in internal people. And this was different for VMware. Because when the expert certifications that existed prior were built, it was built internally. It was built with VMware people. This one was built in a collective effort between external and internal. So it gave us a better understanding of the challenges that we were going to face as everybody started to adopt this and as everybody started to look for training. Because we needed to know what was the vSphere administrator missing? What were the gaps that we need to close when we train or certify? And for the networking person, what were the gaps that we needed to close when we train and certify? See, the lines at VMware are getting blurred. Products overlap with one another. So we had to identify where those overlaps were. What are the touch points for NSX? Who does it impact? How does it impact them? And then how do we go out and tell that message through certification and training? So how do we get there? Well, in the months that we brought these individuals in, it wasn't just about training them, but it was about talking with them about the things that they were learning so that we could make adjustments to the program that we then rolled out to the public because the demographic of people that we brought together was extremely diverse among the backgrounds, who they worked for, what they did, and what their level of expertise or their vertical of expertise was prior to beginning this program. So we spent these months training these people to become the experts we wanted them to become and answering the questions that they had around the product. Took that information and we begin to build our certification and training. So what does that road look like? We're going to show you that what we've built will help you from the professional level all the way up through the expert level. So whether you are just beginning now with virtualization, network virtualization, or even networking, all the way up through the folks who have been doing networking or virtualization for many years. We now have officially a VMware NSX install configure manage class, publicly available today. It's a five-day course that covers all of the major features for you to be able to install, configure, and manage NSX. If you've taken VMware classes before, you're probably familiar with vSphere install, configure, manage, or Horizon View install, configure, manage. So nothing different from a training perspective as far as the names that we give or what you should expect from the course. We are now currently working on an NSX fast track for internetworking experts. How many of you in here are Cisco people? A lot. Look, the love loss is really one way. We love Cisco. We embrace NSX on top of Cisco. That's fine for us. And we're building a class specifically so that we can educate folks on how exactly we can do that. A class dedicated towards helping Cisco customers realize how the two can coexist and you can leverage the benefits of both. So that will be coming uh, probably next quarter. 
Then we have a VMware NSX design and deploy class. This will round out the portfolio of training that we have. This will be another five-day class focused specifically on designing a virtualized network with NSX. But it's not just with NSX. Because I mentioned NSX has all these touch points. Your compute infrastructure, perhaps your storage infrastructure, but most importantly, cloud management platform. When you look at the long-term vision of Software Defined Data Center, it's about compute and storage and networking and cloud management platform. So when you design your network infrastructure with NSX, those things have to come into play. So when you go out and you take a look at what these training courses are going to offer, and subsequently take a look at what the blueprints look like for the certifications I'm going to talk about here in a minute, you will see that we are extending beyond just VMware technologies. We are expecting individuals to understand cloud management platforms beyond our own. Clearly, this shouldn't come as a surprise as we just announced the VMware integrated OpenStack. So OpenStack is a, is a big player in what we see to integrate with NSX. So from a certification standpoint, we have a VMware certified professional on network virtualization. That is out today. As of this morning, that exam is released. We then have something that's very new, and this is the VMware certified implementation expert, the VCIX in network virtualization. So we realized in all of the work that we were doing that there's a very large population of existing network professionals, expert level network professionals, guys that are very fluent in that hands-on configuration job role, skill set. And so we knew that whatever we built, we had to create something that would allow that existing population to understand how to make a horizontal shift into that same level, but in network virtualization. Now, VMware has had the VMware Certified Advanced Professionals. Anybody familiar with those? The VCAPs, right? The VMware Certified Implementation Expert is a hands-on expert level exam. It is not the VCAP. Many are going to say, well, it wasn't the VCAP a hands-on. The VCAP was hands-on. But the VCAP, in my opinion, wasn't an expert level exam. What we're creating with network virtualization is an expert level exam, a hands-on expert level. So folks can clearly see how to make that shift into network virtualization. And then, of course, we have our VMware certified design expert, which we've had VCDX. And if you followed that track, you know we had VCDX on data center, we had VCDX on cloud, and we had VCDX on desktop. So we're rounding that out now with a focus on VCDX for network virtualization. Now, that one's a very interesting one because the VCDX on network virtualization, as I was just talking about a moment ago, is not just about VMware products. It's about understanding network virtualization, the value proposition, and the integration with other things. So when you look at the blueprint, you will see on the blueprint that it talks about the importance of cloud management platform with NSX. We expect candidates to have some level of proficiency in understanding how OpenStack or VCAC will integrate with NSX, because that's really the vision of Software Defined Data Center. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't do everything that we want if we just implement NSX and continue to manually create things. We have to be able to tie that together with automation and orchestration. So as an expert in network virtualization, you have to be able to talk to these other individuals and express how NSX is going to impact what they're doing. You have to be able to talk about what are the, the opportunities for NSX to be automated. What can I do? What can I not do? Why would I automate? You have to drive those discussions. So ultimately, when it comes time to realize the vision of a software-defined data center, we envision that there's going to be an expert in cloud, there's going to be an expert in compute, there's going to be an expert in networking, 
and collectively these minds will put together and design a software-defined data center. This piece is about the role of the network expert in that vision. So the career pro progression, if you currently are not a Cisco professional, you'll see why I'm designating that in a moment. So I'm starting new. I'm interested in getting into network virtualization. NSX install configure manage class prepares you for the VCP and V. Again, both of those are available today. Then we have our NSX fast track for internetworking experts. If you want to take the NSX install configure manage and you want to specialize that, I'm a consultant, I work with a partner that does a lot of Cisco, I can go take the fast track. I could take that instead of the install configure manage if I wanted to. Or I could add to the ICM with the fast track. Get some hands-on experience, work with the product. Sit for the VCIX exam, the hands-on expert exam. Then you have your design and deploy, and then your VCDX. So the, the roadmap has all the pieces there to help you if you're starting from the beginning and you want to get to that expert level. How long does that journey take? I'm not sure. The folks that we brought in was a very intensive process. We had to make them into the experts we wanted them to be based on all of the feedback we got from them, based on the work we did with them. If you have been working in the networking space for some time, and by the way, I have Cisco up here, obviously because Cisco has a large portion of all of the certified networking people today, but we are open to other certifications as well, uh, Juniper, for example. But if you are a CCNA or CCNP, that level corresponds to our professional level. So you want to make that, that move into network virtualization at that level, the certified professional level will be it. We will be announcing sometime in the coming months that we are going to have a grace period for anybody with a CCNA or CCMP that would like to take the VCP exam, you will be able to do so with no requirement whatsoever. So that we can facilitate people in making that move into network virtualization. For the CCIE at that expert level, there's the implementation expert, the VCIX exam. At that level, we are going to offer the same thing. That one will not be time constrained, however. For existing CCIEs, they will be able to transition into network virtualization by taking the implementation expert exam without any prerequisites. See, a lot of what we need to get from somebody to make sure that they're an expert is that they understand network virtualization, but that they also understand the underlying physical networking. We can't get away with just, oh, you know, as long as it works, we're good. We're, we're talking about an integration here between physical and virtual. I mean, it's always been in virtualization that where the rubber meets the road is in the networking. If you think about it, storage. If I put a VM on the wrong piece of storage, eh, maybe it doesn't perform as well. Maybe the RAID type was wrong, the disk type was wrong, but the VM is still running. And you could storage vMotion and you're good. You fixed the problem. But networking, if you don't get it right, things don't work. So just because you're an expert in network virtualization doesn't mean that you don't have to know things about the physical network. If you look at designing NSX and you want to leverage OSPF and BGP dynamic routing protocols, those don't exist in a vacuum. You need to understand how those are going to integrate with the physical infrastructure to provide true routing between virtual and physical. So by allowing the CCIEs to make that horizontal move, we're basically saying, look, we understand your expertise exists in this particular area, and that's great. Now come prove it in our area. I don't know if anybody knows Rawlinson. He's the vSAN guy, but he's been following me and emailing me daily about wanting to learn NSX. So Rawlinson says, after winning awards with Virtual SAN, I wish I could snap my fingers and know NSX. Everything hinges on the network, the virtual network. 
And then finally, LeBron didn't really say this, but I, I think he would. Betting your future on network virtualization with NSX is winning. He might have tweeted that. I don't know. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to introduce you to some of the new faces of elite networking with NSX. I have in the front row some of the individuals who gave a, a large portion of their time between May and August to help us build this program, to become uh, part of this brave new world of NSX experts that would allow us to, to show people what does it look like to be an expert? How do I get there, right? I've showed you how to get there. But I think it's important for you to hear from these individuals why they wanted to do this, what it meant for them personally, because for a lot of you, you're in here to, for a personal reason, right? How do I do something new to make my career better as I move forward? But then also, how did it help their company, right? What is their company's vision? Why was it important for them to do this, to realize some benefit for their company? So we have a mix of partners and customers and independent folks and trainers. And I invite you after the session, come up and talk with these guys. I have t-shirts and I have brass knuckles. I don't know why that was the choice, but maybe it's security, right? Uh, so and yeah, NSX security. Just please don't punch anybody and leave VMware NSX on their face. That's not good marketing for us. Uh, so let's start. I'm going to bring up Rich. Uh, Rich Solito is one of our key VMware customers, come this way, and he will talk a little bit about his role for his organization and why this has been important for him. Thanks, Chris. Wow. <laughs> uh, so WestJet, uh, at WestJet, we really embrace VMware and we've embraced uh, NSX. And if you think about it uh, in terms of an airline and how important certification is, you want to know that the, uh, the guy up at the pointy end of the aircraft is, is certified and qualified to fly that aircraft every time you board an aircraft. And uh, for us in IT, it's no different. Uh, we want to make sure that the people who uh, operate the systems, that keep the aircraft in the air, you know, that make sure that you guys can book tickets, that protect your information, we want to make sure those people are as, as certified and, and understand exactly what they're doing. So certification is very important to us. And uh, this process was, uh, was really a very good process, and uh, uh, so much so that we actually dedicated four people to go through it. Um, we probably have the most number of UCDXs in a single organization. <laughs> and uh, the really cool part about that was uh, just the amount of work and, and understanding that we had to have with our design meant that, uh, like, I'm a security guy, and so this was a big leap for me. <laughs> but having the network and security guys in the same room, working on the same design, making sure that everything blended really well and that and we had to know and understand every component of it was really a tremendous value and we know we've, we've got a great solution out of this and, and something that we can carry on to the future and keep building on. All right. Thanks, Rich. If you think he looks familiar, he did a video for NSX that was at VMworld or Partner Exchange or VMworld last year? Yeah, so he's famous. All right, so next I'm going to bring up Jason Nash. Uh, Jason was, was a key player in all of the work that we've done. Uh, he's an existing VCDX and now uh, one of our dual VCDXs. So as Chris said, my name is Jason Nash. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Vero, a partner based out of the Carolinas in the Southeast. Uh, and we see this, uh, this program and this education as really important because we work with a lot of customers on really going through a top to bottom full stack uh, automation and software defined data center model. And you can't do that without the networking piece. And in fact, usually the largest section of time, the biggest uh, you know, hurdle to fast deployments are the network and the network services. So I thought that this program was a great way to introduce people uh, across the spectrum here to what you know, SDN truly means, 
what VMware's vision of it is, and that it's actually a real-world product. It's not just Gelsinger up on a keynote stage talking about the wonders and the magic of SDN, but really what you can do and how you can make this applicable to your environment. So that's what we've gotten out. It's uh, for you know me being a partner. I'm doing a lot of briefings with customers and really taking them through. We're starting to do POCs. We're starting to do pilots. Um, and really starting to put this into action. What's your session? Uh, one o'clock today. Jason also has a session at one o'clock today with his partner in crime, in crime Chris Wall. Uh, Chris isn't here, but I was, uh, was going to call him on stage too, but you might know Chris. He's, he's a big vSphere networking guy, also a dual. Oh, he is in the back. Stand up, Chris. You got to at least stand up. Way to the crowd. That's Chris Wall, everybody. By the way, if you're starting to get into this process of network virtualization, uh, Chris Wall has written a book on vSphere networking. Uh, it's a very good book. And just to show you the type of guy he is, all of his proceeds go to charity. So he doesn't make a dime off of the book. So he writes a very good book and then gives everything to charity. But it's a great way to, uh, to start learning about networking for vSphere. All right, so next I'm going to bring up John Hayes. Uh, John Hayes works with Palo Alto Network, so he's one of the partners that works very closely with VMware uh, and has a, a vested interest in the success of VMware. Also a dual VCDX. Good morning. What's the name of the book? Uh, Chris. Chris. Hey, Jason, stop Chris. What's the name of your book? No, what's the name? Networking for VMware Administrators. He's giving three away at one o'clock. Three hundred or three? Oh. Still go anyway. All right, go ahead, John. Good morning. Uh, I'm John Hayes. I work at Palo Alto Networks. I'm a security training engineer. Uh, I'm actually kind of new to Palo Alto. So I actually got started in April, so I was on the NSX track before even uh, I decided to move over there. So uh, like Chris says, I'm, I'm dual VCX certified. I also have my data center virtualization that I got last year. And uh, basically, NSX is the way to go. Uh, it's, I mean, you look at the different technologies, the networking side of the house with vSAN and the software-defined data centers, those are the future, right? And you have to actually embrace that specific change that's coming up. Now, you guys that are interested in NSX, right, you guys are probably a lot of, a lot of in the uh, networking side of the house. How many of y'all are concerned about security? Right, I have, I have security. So, so let me encourage you right, to take a look at the Palo Alto Networks. We're tightly integrated with VMware regarding security integration. And a lot of people look at that and say, well, wait a second, right, NSX does a lot of security stuff. What do I need a security company like Palo Alto Networks for? Layer 7, right? We provide the next, secure, next generation firewalls to provide that ability not only in the virtual side of the house for east to west traffic, but also northbound, southbound. So you can have a security solution out there that spans not only the virtual side of the house, but the physical side of the house. Right? So we have a booth down in the partner exchange. Uh, we also have a lab. So basically, I'm a lab proctor for the next four days. So if you're coming over to take a lab, hunt me down and say hello. Right, so we have several labs with NSX, right, introduction in advance, and we also have an integration lab with Palo Alto Network. So if you, you're interested in those, please uh, let us know. We're kind of excited about that. But uh, if you're looking for integration with NSX and security, we're the people to come to because no one else has that close of integration that they have. Thanks, John. All right, so next I'm going to bring up Paul Mancuso. Paul is a longtime Cisco instructor and VMware instructor, and now one of our VCDX network virtualization. Yes, I'm director of virtualization technology training at Firefly, and myself, I have been training Nexus and Cisco UCS since the inception of UCS. And when Chris asked me to be a part of this, I mean, it's an impressive group of folks to do training, or actually to learn, VCDX or NSX, excuse me, <laughs> to the degree that was going to be required in order to pass the VCDX, it presented an opportunity for myself to understand how to better architect a network that truly integrated 
the underlying hardware services as well as the overlay services that's presented inside of the hypervisor. And that gives me quite a bit more emphasis in understanding how I should design the courseware and content that I'm going to be providing for Firefly. So for myself, this particular opportunity presented a great way for me to better learn how to architect and how to design networks and then present them to my students. So this is, and by the way, if you've noticed the handful of folks that we have here, just the impressive array of knowledge, I got to sit there next to somebody here who was actually designing one with, um, with, with his particular environment, and I started learning things that I didn't even, was not even aware of with UCS, because he sat there and said, no, this is how we're going to do it. And that was pretty much one of the best opportunities for myself to sit next to an impressive array of folks and hear how they're going to use it. Folks that were partners with, Cis or with, um, with VMware, I taught courses for uh, VMware with various other partner accounts, and these folks were sitting there telling us how Trend was going to do it, how Symantec was going to use the product. This gives me huge, huge, massive ideas that I never would have thought of before. So I really have Chris to thank for being a part of this group. Thanks, Paul. All right, so next, Ryan. Oh, man. Ryan is uh, an engineer at Columbia Sportswear, and he'll talk about why this was good for him in Columbia. So I've been with Columbia for four years, uh, actually uh, the end of September. And when we started out looking at virtualization, um, they came out and they were talking to our server guys and then they brought me in and I was like, no, 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 no. And too much north-south, too much going on. And now that I've gone through this, gotten the certification, I'm realizing the benefits and it's that click of a button. And, and being able to deploy something instead of a month, two months, we're talking weeks, days. And we're looking to do it uh, Q1, and uh, I got a lot of work ahead of me. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> All right, so the last one I want to bring up is Luke Youngblood. Uh, Luke's from McKesson. And he'll talk a little bit about his experience, and then we'll open up to some Q&A for you guys. Hi, everyone. So my name is Luke Youngblood. I work for McKesson. We're a large healthcare company. And we've been doing uh, private cloud with VCAC for the last 18 months or so. So we, we kind of had a pretty good story to tell. On the compute side, we could provision servers in 20 minutes, and our customers were really happy with that. But we're really missing the big picture of how do I provision networks? in an automated fashion because if my compute is up in 20 minutes but now it takes me two weeks to do firewall policies and load balancers and routers and switches, that sucks. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, what I really wanted to do is a real world design to kind of add network virtualization and automate it through VCAC and the integration into NSX so that we could not only provision those servers in minutes but also all the load balancers and firewall policies and uh, virtual networks that those servers need. And uh, it was a great learning experience for me. I wanted to thank Chris for putting this together. It's an amazing opportunity. And uh, we also had Cisco UCS and Nexus 7K in our design. And it really allowed me to learn the benefits of the, the merging between physical and virtual and how we can leverage NSX to, to achieve all the, the benefits of you know, 7K, Cisco UCS, along with the benefits of virtual networking and fast provisioning. So uh, thanks very much. Yep. All right, so part of the goal of this program, as you can kind of tell from the people who came up here, was to put together people that had different experiences and had different backgrounds so that as we presented this out to the rest of the world, that you folks who were sitting in the audience could look up there and say, hey, that's, that's somebody I can identify with. I, you know, I have that same type of job or I've had that same type of background. You know, if, if we would have done this presentation and, and the front row would have been filled with you know, the network engineers for Google, PayPal, eBay, Amazon, 
right? People in the audience would have been like, well, that's not me. I'm never going to have that job. I can't get to that space, right? Those are very unique positions. But I think you can see from the people who came up here, there's partners, there's customers, there's people with Cisco backgrounds, there's people that are leading you know, their organizations to move forward, uh, there's trainers, there's a whole variety of people. So this, this program, this career path, had to be built to allow people from different areas to be able to come together and start to learn about network virtualization and, and really build a career on this. So think about this. Uh, in 19, I think it was 1983, Cisco started the CCIE program, right? And there's 40,000, I think, CCIEs now or so. Is that right? 40,000? Yeah, 40,000 or so. So, you know, right now that's set as the gold standard for networking. How many of you, if you could go back in time, would have liked to have been among the first two or three hundred CCIEs ever. Probably would have been a pretty good career move, right? That's what we're offering you right now. This is starting now, this career path. There are right now 174 VCDXs in the world. All right, that's VCDX. The VCIX, which is the equivalent of the CCIE, there's 50. 50. So this is an opportunity to start this new career path and be among the first individuals because 20 years from now, 30 years from now, somebody could be saying, hey, remember back in 2014 when VMware started the VCIX program and now there's 40,000 of them? This is your opportunity to be part of a new wave in network virtualization for your organization, but for you personally. When it comes to career path, a lot of that is about your personal success. Some of you, your companies will invest in that personal success because of the benefits their company will realize. For others, it's about you trying to forge your way through the rest of what you're going to do moving forward. So I'll open it up now to any questions that people may have around the training or the certification that we talked about today. Yes? Does this work? No. It okay. works. Um, I'm currently a CCIE. I'm only one of the first 2,500, so not quite as, yeah. as you were talking about. And well a, done. And a VCP. Um, so what I'm curious about, because as I, I heard the development seem to take a period of months, and I'm asking for kind of a spit and distance question here, as to how long do you th how long is this going to take to transition from? what I know today, and I have F5 in my shop, and I have Pell in my shop, and how long, will it, how long roughly will it take for me to transition to, say, get ready to sit for the uh, expert exam? Are we talking six months, a year? What are we, you know, we talking about in terms it, of To be out? honest, it's, it depends on how much time you can invest in that process. I will say that for the folks that are sitting in this room, uh, you know, we went through not just three weeks of intensive, specific training, but also them working through labs and a community and you know, asking questions and things like that. So you know, as this career path becomes available and there's a fast track for folks exactly like you, right, that are looking for this type of thing. So there's a five day training and how much time can I spend after that? And there's a design and deploy class. You know, so if you can leverage those types of things all the while continuing to build your hands on skill with the product, I think six to eight months is a, is a conservative way to look at it. But, you know, if you can't spend that much time, it might be a year, right? But you, you have a head start because of the CCIE piece, right? You have that strong foundation in physical networking, and you've proven it by being one of the first 2,500. So the learning curve for you is all about the NSX piece. If, if the next person stands up and says, well, hey, I'm a vSphere administrator, what do I do? Well, the learning curve is different. Because now they have that foundation of VM kernel and hypervisor and maybe distributed switching. So the gaps that they have to fill are a little bit different than the ones that you would have to fill. Right? But that's where you know, the training pieces come in and we're able to help you know, from either side, whoever comes in. But depending on the amount of time you can invest in it, I mean, these guys did it between May and August. Right? But they were hardcore at this. And you know, we, we guided them through this process, took that information, and created the career path. 
So if you keep your eye on the VMware Education website, the success of this program has made us start thinking about how we turn this into a formal program where we can bring you in at the start and mentor you through this career path until you finish at the, whatever pace it is that you want to work at. And then if you, second question is, if you're already a CCNA, CCNP, those didn't exist when I went. That's how old a fart I am. Uh, and you're already a VCP. So if you're, if you're already a v, VCP, is there a training requirement or? Are, you're a CCIE, correct? Well, I, I have, there are a few other people in my company that for reasons like they have families and people that want to talk to them when they okay. leave work, which makes it very hard to get a CCIE if you have that. Uh, so they have only, they may be at a CCNA level okay. or a CCNP level. We've been encouraging them to go into sure. VCP. So if they, have, if they have a CCNA or CCNP, we will right. be announcing shortly that there will be a grace period for them that they will not have a class requirement in order to get the VCP. To get into the career path, there will not be a requirement. When that grace period is over, the recommendation will be, or the requirement will be, take one of the classes and then do the VCP. And if you're already a VCP DV or VCP then, cloud, then the VCP NV can serve dual purpose of getting you into the career path while okay. also earning your recertification okay. for your VMware. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Uh, you talk about hands-on experience, but you can't download the product. Yes. I'm fighting that battle, and I, I expect that there will be changes soon. So right now, the way that they're handling this is if you attend a class, you're more inclined to get the installation software. We have some licensing things to work out in order to uh, allow it to expire. But I, I totally understand that piece and am fighting that battle. That, so. that is a very big problem for I, Forget about certification, just I got to sign off. Yes, you are, you are preaching to the choir. I'm one of the biggest advocates for us to fix that problem so that we can make the bits more readily available. It's hard to educate people on something they can't get their hands on. I get that. Yes. Okay, send me an email and I'll, I'll work with you. There, there should be a process where you can... All right, I'll, I'll help you. Yeah, they are time limited. I, I get that. But if you're interested in just getting in to see what it does now, that's a great solution. But by no means will I rest on that being our final solution and not having access to the bits. So, yes. Yeah, a question on that grace period for uh, Cisco, like if you're a CCNA, uh, does it have to be valid? Because uh, it expires after, I think, it's three yes. years. Yeah, it's so we're, we're going to require that you submit whatever the link is for your active Cisco certification and then somebody will validate it, get you into the MyLearn system, and then you'll be able to register for the exam. And is there a course requirement for VCPs? If you do not have an existing VCP, there will be a course requirement. If you do have an existing VCP, then you can use VCP NV as your recertification without a course requirement. Uh, but if you've got VCP DV, can you use that to take VCP NV without yes. the course? Okay. Yeah. The, the VMware certification process requires you take a course to get a VCP, and once you've done that, then you can move horizontally. Okay, yes? More on the lines of a regular side, my, uh, myself and my partner, we've got a lot of people that we have to get trained. Everybody now is a VCP that's on our staff, but now we want to move them into this forward motion because we, we see it coming at us already from our developers and our engineers. <clears throat> you haven't really brought it. You've talked about the guys from the Cisco coming over it's real easy for them. They understand networking. My guys don't. They don't work on networking. That is that other layer that we never see. Sure. We're the virtualized, virtualized guys. Right. So, in so that, that's the path I need to know. <laughs> yeah, no. If you, if you look at the options that we presented here for the non-Cisco professionals, there's the install configure manage class. That class has actually been written with the vSphere administrator in mind. 
So we actually are going to talk about what exactly is OSPF? How does it work? Right? What is an ARP request, an ARP request? Because that's never been really the job role of that administrator to have to understand those things. So these two classes have been written with those two audiences in mind. When, when you look at the fast track, the fast track is gonna focus additionally on things like what is a hypervisor? What is the VM kernel? How does vNetwork distributed switching work? Because those aren't constructs that the traditional physical Admin network administrator has had to deal with. So that's why those two courses, even though there's overlap, the pieces that are unique are to fit the exact audiences that we've been talking about. Perfect. Thank you. Um, oh, am I able to take the exam uh, here at VMworld? The VCP NV exam? Yes. So you are, but only if you have taken the class. Yeah, I have. Okay, so then yes, you can go sign up and take it today. And where, where, where does that happen? There's a certification lounge. I believe it's in Moscone South, and they have all the exam there. It's actually 50% off, so. Awesome, thank you. Good luck. I didn't write the exam if you don't pass. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. The question was, if you're a CCNA and you don't have to take the classes, there's self-study materials. Right now, there's not, which is why it would not make sense for me to say, hey, the grace period starts now, right? What good would that do? Uh, VMware Education does have e-learning stuff that's coming out. Uh, also, if you look at the VMware website or the, NS the NSX website specifically, there are uh, very intensive two-day hands-on workshops going around the country, which if you already are a CCNA or CCMP, this kind of gives you all of the good bits about NSX and what it does and could be a very good precursor to saying, eh, I'm going to go give the exam a shot now since I already have the CCNA. So those two-day workshops are filling up pretty quickly around the, around the country. What is it like? Yeah, so the VCP exam is like our typical VCP exam with multiple choice, multiple select. It's, you know, it's not meant to be tricky. There's no hot spots or drag and drops or any fancy items. It's a professional level core exam on NSX. It's, uh, I believe it's 80 to, or 100, somewhere in there. Okay. Yes. Yes, they are going to go through localization. Uh, I mean, they're available globally in English. But in now the two have come together. Oh, okay. Yes, there tr typical VMware exams available through Pearson View. So it'll be available through all Pearson View testing centers around the globe. Yes. All about network virtualization. Well, there's some distributed switching, but if you had a distributed switching question on your VCP data center, that's not the one that's on the VCP NV. No, no item reuse in the VCP NV. So it, it is unique to NSX. And when is it going to be open? Now, right? You go right now and take it. Anyone else? Enjoy your show, folks.